Anyone who reads the Daily Bugle knows that Tobey Maguire will not be returning as Peter Parker in the next Spider-Man movie. Sony wants to take the Spider-Man franchise in a younger, more contemporary direction, which I think means younger and less expensive actors. So do you remember a few days ago when I said this? Now with this whole Spider-Man going back to high school thing, I better not be seeing Spider-Man 90210 or Spider-Man Twilight. I know what you are. You climb up the walls. You shoot webbing out of your hands. Say it. Spider. Well, apparently in the past few days, the internet has been buzzing like crazy saying that Robert Pattinson is in the running to become the next Peter Parker in the Spider-Man movie. Also in the running are Zac Efron and Michael Cera. Now, let's just kill all of these rumors right now. Robert Pattinson will not play Peter Parker. That's not my opinion, that's just a matter of fact. First off, from aside the fact that he can't act like Peter Parker, he's not nerdy enough to be Peter Parker, and this is probably all just buzz from Twilight, he is far too old. By the time they start pre-production, he's gonna be 24 years old, and the studio wants to go back to Peter Parker's high school years, and that's just not gonna happen. But let me backtrack on the rumor a little bit. The rumor about Zac Efron and Robert Pattinson started from a British tabloid. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Travis, why does it matter if it's a British tabloid? It doesn't matter if they're British. This is what happened. Way back in March and April, before Sam Raimi left, before Tobey Maguire left, there were a whole bunch of websites posting that Robert Pattinson was gonna be the new Peter Parker. As an April Fool's joke. After Tobey Maguire and Sam Raimi left the franchise recently, the British tabloids jumped online and found all of these fake websites. Referencing the websites, they made a media frenzy. Over and over, Sony has said, no one is cast for Peter Parker. We're not looking for anybody for Peter Parker right now. We're only looking for a director. And then they found a director. The director of the next Spider-Man movie will be none other than Mark Webb, the director of 500 Days of Summer. Mark Webb's last and only major motion picture, 500 Days of Summer, had a budget of $7.5 million. The upcoming Spider-Man movie will have a budget of $80 million, more than 10 times that of 500 Days of Summer. $80 million is a lot, but it's considerably less than the $130 million budget that the first Spider-Man film had. It's still going to be a lot of money to Mark Webb, and I really hope he can handle it. Then again, now that I think about it, how much of the $130 million had to go to a big-name director, big-name actors? And although the script is finished, the studio is still talking about making it a little darker. Now, I'm not talking darker emo, because we all saw how well that worked for Spider-Man 3, but they want more darker, grittier, which I think is a bad formula. I mean, sure, it worked for Batman, but Batman is a gritty character. You're supposed to thrive on that with Batman. I mean, as stupid as it sounds, if Robert Pattinson and Zac Efron were to play Peter Parker, they would still rake in millions of dollars of money. Robert Pattinson and Zac Efron, in the studio's mind at least, are safe box office bets. You know, let's remake Mary Poppins and make it grittier. That's a wonderful idea. Joaquin Phoenix can play the male lead, beard and all. But who's gonna play Mary Poppins? What about Zac Efron? He's a safe box office bet. Sony, listen to me. Spider-Man needs to be a character that the majority of people can relate to. Not Robert Pattinson, not Zac Efron, not Shia LaBeouf. I know you were thinking about Shia LaBeouf, Sony. Get Shia LaBeouf out of your mind. Do not put him in this movie. There's a real good chance that Sony's gonna be looking for a relatively unknown actor to fill the shoes of Peter Parker. Me personally, I know three actors who I'd love to see play Peter Parker. Number one, Patrick Fugit. He played Jenna Malone's love interest in Saved, and a while back he was even targeted to be McGuire's replacement. I think he'd be the perfect build-up to play a young Peter Parker. Two, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg came on the scene in Zombieland and Adventureland, and if he was to play Peter Parker, it would be the nerdiest line of movies ever. It's like a nerdy cinema hat trick. Three, Anton Yelchin. Anton Yelchin came on in Terminator Salvation and played Chekhov in the new Star Trek movie. He definitely has the nerdy thing going on, and he would be great as Peter Parker. Personally, I'm gonna give Mark Webb a shot. And it's a rather ironic last name, don't you think? 500 Days of Summer was a great flick, but it's really hard to base a director's vision with the only point of reference being the movie that made them famous. He was able to pull off the comedic awkward side of the characters in Summer, and if he's able to do that in Spider-Man's teenage years, he'd be doing something that Raimi failed to match up to in the comics. Leave a comment below saying who you think should play Peter Parker. I'll see you later, guys. Links to the articles and even a quick and easy way to retweet this video are in the sidebar. Let's get these nasty Robert Pattinson rumors stomped out. Also, there's info in the sidebar about a YouTube project I'm doing where you guys submit videos to be put on another channel. It's a great way to get your face out there, so check it out, guys.